Hey guys, welcome back to Captain Jasper. Today we're going to be talking about different bunny breeds. There are over 300 breeds of domesticated rabbit. All of these breeds originally came from the European rabbit. Over years of natural selection and then selective breeding by humans, many people believe that rabbits were domesticated in 600 AD by monks. However, this has recently been debunked, making Romans one of the first to start keeping domestic captive collections of rabbits. They would keep captive collections of bunnies as a form of meat and fur. They would take them across seas with them, where they would often escape confinement and start wild populations. Before this, rabbits were only found in the Iberian Peninsula and southern France. No true date can be pinpointed as to when rabbits were truly domesticated as pets, but somewhere along the line we started selective breeding for cute characteristics, opposed to ones more suited to fur and meat. As there are so many different breeds of rabbits, all with diverse histories of where they came from and how they came to be bred, I thought it'd be fun to make this into a series. I'll be focusing on two different bunny breeds every other week, starting with the two I've had the most or kept the longest. Comment below what breeds you want to see next. Today I thought I'd start with the Flemish Giant and of course Mini Lops. Flemish Giants are a very old breed of domesticated rabbit, historically raised for meat and fur, this breed has been documented since the 16th century in Belgium. It has believed to have been descended from two different meat and fur breeds, including the Stone Rabbit and the European Pantagonian breed, which is now extinct. However, the first standards for these breeds were not written until 1893. As this breed is one of the longest to be around humans, it has made it extremely docile. This could be due to selective breeding, as they would select karma rabbits to breed from each time. The Flemish giant is known to be a gentle giant, as often compared to being dog-like. Having the pleasure of having a Flemish giant mix for over seven years, I definitely agree they make great companions. However, their care needs can be complex. And if you thought a medium-sized bunny ate a lot, then wait until you see the feeding recommendations for a Flemish giant. As we know from my nutrition video, rabbits require an egg cup of pellets per kg of body weight. A lot of Flemish giant breeders Will recommend free feeding these guys. However, I strongly advise against this. As they were originally bred for meat, these guys tend to pack on the pounds. I would advise feeding the egg cup per kg of body weight, along with a very big bundle of fresh greens and herbs depending on their size, and unlimited hay and fresh water, and a very small portion of treats. These guys can plow through food, so try not to overfeed or feed everything all in one go. Instead, try to feed it throughout the day. They don't tend to reach full maturity until they are 9 months old, but these guys can range from 5kg to 10kg in weight, with their average weight being around 6 to 7 kilograms. As Flemish giants are usually very docile, they are extremely easy to handle. However, correct handling is essential. Flemish giants, like any rabbit, can become aggressive or even fearful if handled incorrectly or irresponsibly. Their large size means you have to be extremely careful when handling them, ensuring their spine is aligned and supported at all times. These bunnies have extremely powerful back legs that when handled incorrectly, they will kick out, often leaving nasty scratches and possibly injuring your bunny in, in the process. Back legs and spines can break very easily if any bunny is handled incorrectly. And it can be fatal if a bunny jumps from your arms. This is not a bunny for a child to hold. As said before, they have extremely powerful back legs. Always supervise any breed of rabbit if a child is holding them. I highly advise you never let a, a child carry a bunny. Instead, just allow them to cuddle the bunny while sat on the floor. Along with special handling requirements, these bunnies also require a lot more space and exercise than the average bunny. I had huge issues finding tunnels and hides that would fit Stan's size. Everything needs to be plus size for these beautiful bunnies. Sadly, they only have a life expectancy of five to eight years. Stan made it to seven and a half, and I definitely wish he could have been with us longer. I highly recommend this breed if you can give them the space and time they deserve. They are extremely loyal bunnies, often making strong bonds with their humans. I would suggest this is not a breed for a beginner, as they have complex care needs. The US Mini Lop, not to be confused with the UK Miniature Lop, often nicknamed the Mini Lop, but a very different breed, and one I will cover later in the series. The US Mini Lop is a medium-sized rabbit and a very popular breed. A guy named Bob Hirschberg went to a national rabbit show in Germany, where he found a breed called Klein Widder that inspired him to go back to the US and breed his own. 
Klein Weider is often called the first mini lot, was bred from the German big lot and the small chinchilla rabbit, which came in agouti and white colours. Hirschbeck created the first procreation of mini lops in 1972 by breeding agouti lops and a white lop female. In 1974, went to the American Rabbit Breeders Association to debut his creation. The outcome was they wanted the breed to be smaller and more compact in order to be more attractive to the public. They also suggested the, chain, the name be changed to Mini Lop to be more appealing to the US public. By 1980, the breed was apparently perfected and recognized as an official rabbit breed by the RABA. I love the US Mini Lop. I've had three and I currently still have two. I think they make a great first time bunny this breed is a fairly new one compared to other breeds such as the Femmes Giant that's been around for centuries. They are often laid back but with a curious nature. They tolerate handling well and enjoy being social with their humans. They have an average life expectancy of 8 to 12 years and should weigh an average of 2.5 kg. Males generally reach sexual maturity from around 3 months of age. However, Alice started showing behavioural changes that indicated he was reaching sexual maturity from 10 weeks of age. Females usually reach sexual maturity a little later, at around 4 months of age. The mini lop is usually fully grown by around 9 to 10 months of age. The only issue I personally have with this breed is that humans have selectively bred them to have loppy ears. The first lop is thought to be the English lop, bred in the 19th century. Often humans would selectively breed for larger rabbits as we used to use them for meat and fur. This would often cause genetic anomalies to occur. There are drawings from Darwin studying rabbits with half up and half down ears. Eventually humans started to breed lop ears as a cute trait when rabbits became more popular as pets. This selectively bred characteristic comes with dire consequences for the rabbit. Unfortunately, lop ears are much more prone than pointy-eared rabbits to have issues with a buildup of earwax and ear infections. This is due to their ear canal being much smaller they have also been documented to have more teeth issues and sharper back teeth. In another study I read, they found lops were much more prone to experience pain during routine ear examinations, whereas pointy-eared rabbits indicated no pain at all. Another issue with dwarf rabbits and lop breeds is brachycephalia. Brachycephalic means short skull, and it's something that has been bred in many different species. It causes the skull and the nose and often the throat to be much smaller than the average breeds. This in turn can cause respiratory issues and teeth issues in rabbits. I hope you guys like this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and comment below what breeds you want to see in the next video.